Miller scout right there toward the rail, and Campella does it again. Campella Saki's out and breaking sun. Campella, a sixteenth of the wire. It's Rich Campella is coming back. Campella has come back and he's going to win it. A sensational performance. It's Campella by three with Monkey Wrench driving to the outside. Campella twenty-eight straight, one fifty-seven and two. Fortunes change and shift, but the race is to the swift. The race is to the swift. You know, there's just something about that horse. Cam fell. I don't know just what it was, but when old Pat Crow would give him the green light, step on the gas, he'd start moving. Wouldn't matter what the hole he'd come out of was or how far around he had to go or how parked out he'd be. He just would get up there so quick and then... There'd just be that moment when he'd be right there with him, and then he'd be gone. He'd say goodbye, fellas, and it, he just let the air out of their rubbers. <laughs> just a pace in the home. To, just, and you know, before 1982, nobody ever heard of him. Where did he come from? <laughs> That's the thing. Where did Cam Fella come from? The two fellas that got lucky with this horse was, of course, Norm Clements and Norm Faulkner. I like to call them the two Norms. It's funny how they met. Clements had been in the sport and good business, oh, for a long, long time, and he wanted a kind of better place to, well, one more spot to kind of have his operation. So he goes up to the Stouffville Flea Mart. That's got about a thousand stalls inside and outside. He gets a hold of the boss man, Norm Faulkner, and he introduces himself. He says, how about me coming in here with a sporting goods thing? Well, Faulkner says, I've already got someone here with sporting goods, so we don't need you. And the funny thing is, they become the best of friends, probably the luckiest guys you'd ever find anywhere. <laughs> Real lucky, because, because Clements had his ears open. Any guy around a racetrack does, and he knows his way around the track, I can tell you that. He heard that this Doug Arthur, who'd been in the game quite a while, had a horse for sale. Well, you got to watch it when someone's got a horse for sale, because it's an old story in the racetrack. There's no such thing as buying a good horse. That ain't true. Cab Phillip proves that one ain't true. So the following Monday morning, I said, well, I'm going to take a chance and I'll phone him. So I phoned him. I said, Doug, is this horse still for sale? He said, yes, but it's 150000 U.S. I said, oh. He says, well, there's a 10000 commission in it, so if you want them, you can have them for 140. So now I knew I either had to make a decision or, or forget about it. So I phoned Pat Crow and I said, phone the vet and see what this Ridgeling thing means, whether Cam Pella can breed and uh, I'll phone you right back. Then I phoned Norm Faulkner. I said, Faulkner, we've got to make up our mind in five minutes. So I said, I'm going to phone Crow back, and then I'm going to phone you back, and then I'm going to phone Doug Arthur. So I phoned Pat, and Dr. Ruck said there should be no problem in the breeding. And then I phoned Norm Faulkner and told him that, and together we decided, yes, let's buy him. Then he was off to the Meadowlands January 15 with Pat Crow on the bike. They win one. 
Win easy. Look awful good at the big time races. That's real big stuff. And of course, Crow comes gumbooting over the two norms. He says, I got an offer for a quarter of a million. <laughs> well, Fockler says, forget it. Pat Crow apparently was offered $250,000 for Cam Fella before he got off the sulky at the end of the race. Anyways, at uh, midnight that night, Norm had phoned home, and I was sitting there waiting for the results, and he said, we're offered 250000 for Cam Fella. What do you think? And uh, I was wanting to get an answer from Norm before I made a decision, and I said, uh, primarily, I said, uh, I thought we bought the horse to race him. And Norm said, uh, that's exactly the way I feel. To hell with him. Let's race him. So on they go, and it's just one success after another. They win the hope. Through the stretch, Cam Fella in front by five, six lengths, R.B. Smokey second. Cam Fella in front, drawing away. Then it was the new face. Final move on the outside, and as they come to the finish, it is Cam Fella turning in a game performance to win it. The final time was 158 flat. And then, boys, boom. That one thing you really fear just strikes terror into your heart. He had some kind of a fracture, some kind of a problem. They thought he was finished. We then decided to send a new Bolton Center. We had two or three doctors there look at him. They recommended we lay him off because they suspected there was a hairline fracture. We then had the uh, drawings or the x-rays brought up to Terry Ruck. He looked at them. Then we had two or three more vets in New York. It got to be over hundred, hundreds of uh, x-rays were taken. Finally, we had to say we either had to make a decision, either he was going to Los Alamitas for the, for the Los Alamitas pace, or we'd lay him off for three months. We then had Doc Johnson in New York look at him, and we together, Pat Crow and, and Doc Johnson and Norm and I, made the decision that we would race him. In a tough spot and looking for somewhere to go is Cam Fella. Take water time, 128 and 3. LaRoe and still has pace and the lead. Two lengths. Walt Hanover is trying to close the gap. Ravenova is on the outside. And I could have got out after Porta Pole, but was LaRoe was in front and I decided not to, which was my mistake. And a horse made a break in front of me when I couldn't get out down around the bottom turn. Cam went up over top of his wheels, went to his knees, and that's what happened in the spring championship. Well, fortunately, Cam was all right after that accident. He was a little shook up, and so were they watching it. That's a wicked thing to have happen. Anyways, the Norms had a meeting with Pat Crow, and they all put their heads together, and they decided, let's go for Harness Racing's Triple Crown for Pacers. First stop, New York, Yonkers Raceway, the Kane Pace. So off they go, they forget Hollywood, put their heel swifters, flash pads on, gumboot across the continent to New York City. But <laughs> it just ain't that easy. If you're supplementing a horse into them kind of races, you got to come up with some pretty big spondulics, so they wanted 25000 bucks. Well, the norm's hemmed and hawed just a bit. Meanwhile, old Pat Crow, he hitches old Cam up in the morning, and he trains in 155 flat. <laughs> oh, he did. I tell you, that was the end of it. The 25 grand was in the office before you could see Jack Rubs. Cam Fella moving up on the outside, second in challenge. Livingston County on the rail, third. Coming towards the half-mile pole, Cam Fella on the outside gets the lead. Jet set Mike back to second, Livingston County third. Halftime, one minute flat. They come to the top of the stretch. Cam Fella in front by two and a half, three lengths. Livingston County down the center of the track second, Jet set Mike third. That's Cam Fella in front by two and a half, Livingston County second. Cam Fella in front. And when that horse came down the stretch and that one, that was the biggest thrill I ever had when we beat Merger and won the elimination. We went on to win the final, but the, the final was an aftermath for me. I did never left my seat, just sat there and squeezed the rail and cheered like hell. After the two norms win the cane, of course, they're just on cloud nine, but you'd never know it looking at them. There they are, down by the old rail there at the Yonkers Raceway, talking to the people, just enjoying the whole thing of of the association of being with a big horse, that's that's part of what racing's about. A big horse changes a person. And you gotta be tough to deal with the rough things because adversity come. Cam loses the Meadowlands pace of the Meadowlands. Million dollar Meadowlands pace. Of course, he had a virus. The norms was good. So was Pat Crow. They, they bought in their lip. They didn't give no excuse or nothing like that. And they shipped them home. Thank you very much. That'll do. Thanks a lot. There was so many times when I ran for reasons, even
even I didn't know There were times I admit I'd relax just a bit And I started off way too slow Then I sense my speed as I pull into the lead My thoughts begin to drift You know, sometimes a virus will knock a horse just flat the way it does a human, but Cammy just perked right up on the, on the farm at Princely Acres over there in Oxbridge, and I don't know, he come into Greenwood Raceway ready for any society, knocks off the Queen City pace, the first jewel in our pace in Triple Crown, and he was ready for that. And Bob outside, and Angle at the lead, screen outside. Hans Bella reaches up to take the lead. Solid field second, Angle at the closing. It's Hans Bella by a race, Bella in the lead. Hans Bella by a race, Hans Bella at the closing. It's Hans Bella by a race, Solid field second, Angle at the third. And Hans Bella wins the Queen City for Pat Bell and the mile in a new track record. What? Norm does it up right. He's got 200 supporters in that dining room there, and the place just goes wild. You couldn't... It, the, the whole thing just caught on. All of a sudden, there was kind of a huge, giant Cam fella bandwagon. Over to Flammerdown's Raceway they go, and Cam, Cam's in the, in the Confederation Cup there, and Ken Workington on the public address system. He gets that name. He says the Payson Machine. On the inside, Ideal will go trailing Armbro Andy. They're all chasing Cam Fella, the pacing machine. Past three quarters, 129 and two. In the drive to the wire, they're going after Confederation Cup six. It's Cam Fella, he's gonna win it. A battle for the other positions. Cam Fella, the winner of the final in 158 and one. And it was the pacing machine from then on. My gosh, Skippy Kemsley comes up with Cam Fella buttons. And they go down to Montreal's Blue Bonnets Raceway for the great big pre de pace. And they got 1,500 Camfella buttons. Well, it looked like Camfella had come to take over the whole place. He just, he just is fantastic. And the old Camfella Express, that's a bus, of course. It just starts going to all his races, and they can't keep the people away. They're just coming out now to see this horse. He's a sort of modern-day Dan Patch, and he is terrific. I figure Cam Fellow is one of the best horses ever run as a pacer. I think he's a wonderful horse, and I think he's he's going to produce some good, very good breed. He's a marvel. He's really well named the pacing machine. Now there's just no way you're going to stop the old Cam Fella Express for the rest of the year. They're just rolling along with there's one snag, just one snag. They couldn't get into the little brown jug of Delaware, Ohio. That's a real big race, but you couldn't even pay a supplemental fee to get in. They don't allow it. So they have to sit it out. Well, merger win it. A horse cam it handled real easy four for four times. But you know, it's funny with horses. The owner of merger, Morton Finder, he comes along with norms. He says, let's have a match race. Mike holding it short. Well. I think I said I'd love to, but I can't. Uh, my horse had raced him four times before. We'd whipped them four times before. Um, I said, uh, after some thinking, we're going to the messenger. We're putting up our 25000 to get into the messenger. If you want to race us, we'll be at the messenger. And we'll beat you again. They move around the final turn. Merger on the outside has his head in front. At the rail, Cam Fellow is second. They come to the top of the stretch. Cam Fellow on the inside. Merger on the outside is second. Tamagin rushing up as they come for the wire. Cam Fellow on the inside. Merger on the outside. They come to the wire. That's Cam Fellow. Icarus Lobel trying to close. Cam Fellow wins the messenger. The Norms is at one table. Morton Finders at the next. They're looking at one another. <laughs> and old Cam just goes out there and he wins both heats just for a pastime. The Norms look at Finder. They have to mark him absent. <laughs> Word comes up to Canada, Cam Fella, horse of the year in the United States, Cam Fella, horse of the year in Canada. Well, they throw a party. They're still talking about that part. And by this time, why, Cam, he was beating some pretty good horses, like Mackenzie Almahurst, Tamagin, no nukes. He was whipping no nukes every time they hooked up. Uh, 
I never seen so many people have a good time and get so drunk. <laughs> anyway, Norma, Clements, when he gets up and he talks about something and he, he talks about people, it's pretty plain to see that it all comes from the heart. And, uh, you know, I don't think there's a better guy around that you'd ever possibly work for. I don't think anybody could have had more fun at a horse of the year than our stable. The two norms shared their fun with more people than anybody else could have. It's just been a special time for me. Uh, my wife, I've been associated with harness racing some, since I'm a kid. Uh, seven, eight years now. And uh, my wife says, I've never seen and enjoyed a sport the way I enjoyed it this year. And I never have. And uh, if there's a better bunch of people in this world than you, all you folks, the way you've treated me, I like to see them. I like to find them because it just can't be. They've already won 28 out of 33 starts as a three-year-old. Well, it's awful tempting to pack it in, but there's one problem about packing it in with old Cam. He's a Ridgeland. A Ridgeland. You know what the veterinarians say about a Ridgeland? That's a horse with one testicle. And the breeding boys, oh, geez, they love to knock when they know that. That's what they started to do. Remember, they want to make sure that success won't stick. We visited a number of farms to find out about standing Camfella as a stud. Uh, there was uh, some farms interested, but there was not that much interest in buying shares in Camfella. And the one farm that we visited was uh, Rock Glen, and Jim Cation said uh, to both Norm and I as we stood there, he said, uh, you guys have had uh, a lot of fun racing this horse this year. He said, what do you want to do? Do you want to pin the horse up, stand him? Watch him get fat. Well, Norm Clements decides to carry on. He don't care about this missing part of Cam Fella. He knows he's got a world champion he wants to syndicate him. So he starts beating his gums with Ed Friedberg in Jersey to try and figure out a syndication. And so I'm make, making a proposal, which I hope you will seriously consider. And that is that I lease Cam at my farm for, say, three years, during which time we will be able to establish, if he's fertile, and we'll be able to establish whether he's producing an unnecessarily large number of Ridgelings. And if he's fertile, and we can say, able to say, a command a book of 75, and if he doesn't produce, say, more than 50% Ridgelings, then we will enter into a transaction in which I pay so much money for, let's say, a 25% interest in the horse. And no way, Ed. That's, that's no deal for me. I can get 100 people to, to want to lease my horse. My horse is a champion. Last year, he beat everybody, horse of the year. What I'm looking for is somebody to buy at least five shares of my horse who has a nice farm, then I'll talk to him about standing my horse. That kind of a lease deal, forget it. Anybody give me that kind of deal. If you want to be serious about it, and you want to buy some shares, talk to me. Well, the boys signed a deal five minutes before they all sat down to screen a brand new movie on Cam Fella, the big three-year-old. Interesting, they decided that Cam was a $4 million stallion and they put him into 40 shares, 100 grand a piece. The deal was that Ed Friedberg would have five shares, an option for five, and Cam would stand at stud at his joint down in Jersey. Well, after the movie, and everyone loved it, Earl Lennox popped up, the old announcer, and he says, now listen, anyone interested in this, you got the Norms here, Friedberg's here, and we've also got Bruce Johnson, Canadian sportsman here from Tilsonburg. Come on, talk to these guys. This is a great racehorse. Get in on this, fellas. Well, there was sort of, there was what kind of mild interest, you might say, sort of doubting Thomas. Oh, they drank the booze and ate the grub, but didn't do too much. Well, a few weeks went by, and by gosh, the norms, they're not to be deterred, you know. They're tough suckers. There they was with Bruce Johnson again. Now they're in the presidential suite at the Ramada Inn. They've got plates of food and gallons of libation. And they wait, and they wait, and they wait. The time just keeps on ticking by. No oh, one showed up. There was one phone call from a guy who has a gimlet eye for a horse. you got to get up early in the morning Hello? to whip him. National Jim, this is Greg Coleman. Can I talk to Norm Clements, please? Oh, he's not in? Who am I talking to? Sharon? 
Sharon, uh, about a week ago I had a conversation with Norm concerning Cam Feller. Yes, I was going to buy a share. I'm going away this afternoon, and I'd like to consummate the, the verbal deal. He won't be back? All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send a check in to Norman to cover my uh, intention. And when I come back, we'll finalize it. Okay? All right. Give him my best regards, will you? Thanks a lot. We were still in the process of writing the agreements, and uh, I think he called back and said, listen, I'm going on holidays with my family. I want to make sure I get a share. I'm going to send you the deposit. And that same gentleman and I today are really good friends, him and his many children, and uh, my whole family are good friends. The story of Cam Fella will continue in just a minute. Well, the beginning of their second year is a complete, unmitigated disaster. Cam goes to the Meadowlands and gets dusted real bad. Next thing, he comes up with a temperature of 105, and he is sick. Pat Crow and the old groom Jeff, they stay up through the night, and all of a sudden, as time goes by, Cam gets a bit better. A bit better all the time, but he misses a month's racing. Then they go to Brandywine, figuring it's a pretty easy spot, and they get dusted there, not by very good horses. But what do you think happens? Pat Crow comes along with Friedberg and suggests, hey, look, let's quit now. This has gotten off to an awful bad start. We're beginning to look silly. Beginning the second year, I guess I don't know how I felt. I, I didn't know whether I was sick or going to go off a bridge. Yeah, I didn't know what to do. I took the responsibility of, of making the decision to race him, I guess. And uh, then the big indecision was, what should we do? Cam lost his first few races. We did know he had a virus, but a virus everybody knows can last for six months. But in his three-year-old year, he wasn't supposed to win, and he won it all. In his four-year-old year, he wasn't supposed to lose. And here he is, he's out there losing a few races at the start of the year. We've now got to decide whether are we going to continue to race the horse or are we going to try the breeding program. But convincingly, Norm, I've got to put Norm Clements on top of this, Norm said he is the best, let's race him. We raced him. Cam Bella with a short lead, Jeff's Eternity on the outside, second, Cam Fillum on the inside, Jeff's Eternity, Cam Bella, Jeff's Eternity coming on. Right at the wire, Jeff's Eternity beat us. Ed Friedberg owned Jeff's Eternity. It wasn't bad enough that Cam lost, but he got beat by my partner, new partner's horse. And to make things worse, Ed Friedberg started coming down on me pretty heavy. How come Cam fell lost again? He's, he was struggling, and my thoughts were that um, I think he's a great horse, and I think he proved it at three. Why do we have to prove anything more? Let's breed him. But then it got a little hot and heavy, and I said, listen, Friedberg, you still only own five shares. If you want your money back, I'll write you a check today and I'll give it back to you. And he backed off. And I think that was when Ed Friedberg and myself became pretty good friends. He understood where I was coming from and, and uh, at a later time he, he said he made a mistake. I'm happy I had the thoughts, it's just that I happened to be wrong. He's a great horse and he proved it. Well, there's no choice for the boys but to start racing again. So Cam hits the raceways, wins one down at Freehold, but gets sick again. Yeah, he comes back again, wins at Batavia, then he loses at Buffalo Raceway. Loses to Perfect Out, and boys, oh boys, Perfect Out's owners, they sure need the tongue strap. They're claiming they got a champion. Well, the two horses meet at Mohawk Raceway on a Sunday night, and by gosh, Cam gets up, wins by a nose, but something I never seen before. Dougie Brown, the driver at Perfect Out, lodges a claim of foul and claims that Pat Crow on Cam Fella's whip bothered his horse. The judges are there beating their gums, studying the thing back and forth, and then, oh, boys, oh, boys, down comes the number for Cam Fella. Well, you could have, the air, it was electric. I'm telling you, everyone had their shorts in the knot. That was something. Cam Fella, perfect out is coming at him. Cam Fella, perfect out, Arbel Arbo. Cam Fella is up to it. Perfect out is closing at him. Cam Fella, perfect out. Cam Fella, perfect out, inching up and getting up. I gotta go over and ask the two norms about that. 
You know, you guys are sitting here just as loose as ashes and twice as dusty, but I'll bet that night your number come down and you got disqualified, your eyes were shooting fire. Well, I was sent an interview at my farm. I'd never seen it before, and I'm sure, I haven't seen it since, and I'm sure I'll never see it. Again, well, sure. more adversity. No breeders interested in Cam fella. Friedberg won't pick his option up in his shares. Now, what yeah, was that about? Fred, the thing on that was, uh, Freeberg never told us. We write about it in the paper. In the paper. Yeah, but I don't think we really cared anyways. We owned almost all the shares. Freeberg owned his five with another option. We didn't care. Boy, you're tough. You didn't care. How no. do you feel after he lose in the World Cup? He didn't really lose in the World Cup. He, that was his first good race as far as I could see. He, he came from way back, finished second, a mile and a quarter, first time he'd ever run a mile and a quarter. Yeah. And, and the next race was going to be a mile and a half. If you really want to talk about one, talk about the second one. Well, he had the ten hole. He never, he never got pour, to the wood. It was wood. pouring rain. He was yeah. dead last. The announcer never called him to the three quarter pole. Here's Cam. Never get a call. All of a sudden, boom, boom. Here comes Cam Fella. Circle the field. And he here comes easy. Cam Fella on the far outside as the field turns for home. And they hit three quarters in one twenty six and three. And they're at the top of the stretch. Maple Fritz toward the inside. TD Escort and Cam Fella. Cam Fella on the outside, toward the inside, TD Escort, and those two will battle it out for the lead. Then farther back, it's Courageous Red, followed by on around toward the inside, a late move by a door. Less than a sixteenth to the finish, Cam Fella with the lead by a length, and Cam Fella will win it. Here he is in 155 flat. That's terrific. You know, you know, when you tell me about the World Cup, I remember something you told me about Norman. That was that was you seen the fear of whatever you want to call it in his eye. Well, tell us that. That's a that's a good story. That well, one. I I don't know. I I won't go on planes to racetracks anymore. But I want to hear that. Well, we're going, to, uh, I guess, through two thunderstorms, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a lightning storm. And Brian Windrods, he flies up. He didn't have a seatbelt. The dash flew off the plane. <laughs> I hit the ceiling. Brian's beer went up. The plane all of a sudden dropped a thousand feet. And he he said I was scared. I think everybody in the plane was scared. I mean, I thought we were Gonsville. We're, we, we did the tra air was traffic. Under, was the air the traffic was so thick they wouldn't let anybody change course. I thought it was the end. I didn't think we'd see the last leg of the World Cup. How did you feel when you got your feet on the ground and you said, gee, now what's the next thing we're saying? I said, we're going to Atlantic <laughs> City after the races. We're not going home. Not fit. And the field moves to mid-stretch. Cam Fella under terrific pressure to hold the lead. It's Cam Fella in front by length. T. Vic angles out after the leader. Perfect out is a distant third. A sixteenth of a mile to finish. Cam Fella all up to hold the lead. T. Vic attacks on the outside. Cam Fella in front and driving. T. Vic, those two hit the wire together. It's Cam Fella holding on to win it in 2.58 and 2. Well, talk about adversity. Cam wins the World Cup. Still no interest from any of the breeders anywhere, and you guys jacked the share price up. Well, he just beat the best in the world at a mile and a half. Yeah. The next week he beat the best in the world at a mile. So Norm and I thought he was worth more money, so we put him up 50% in the price. To a hundred and a half, so he had no takers of 100,000. Well, you're sure as heck oh, yeah, wasn't we did. Gonna... No, we had, a, we had one guy. We had Greg Coleman, the same gentleman that phoned us before anybody else did. He wanted another share. He'd watch Cam race at Yonkers and the Meadowlands. He, he wanted to share. So now Greg owned two shares. He is a very unusual, freaky type horse that has all the combinations that make a horse win and win constantly and race better after each race. What puts that together, I don't think anyone knows. Coleman knew what he was doing. Yeah. No, we gotta, no question. Anyways, we yeah. got to get going. We got to go. You, well, He's got a horse in the first race at Greenwood. Well, you have. Hey, would you come with us? Well, I'd like to, but I gotta stay. You wait here after the races. Well, the season's all right, a race all right, all right, come on back. All right, we'll see you after the races. May the wind at your back always be your own.